Hello from Honolulu, Hawaii. This is Tony Jenkins welcoming you to another edition of ICAST News. Uh, joining me today are Vladimir Kikilo, the Bureau Chief in New York for ITARTAS, the and Errol Abdovich, a correspondent for Deutsche Welle, who is based at the United Nations. Welcome, guys. Um, we're here today to talk about the G20 summit that has just wrapped up in London. And uh, I have to say that early impressions are that it went better and it produced more results than a lot of uh, people had expected in advance. A lot of talking heads like people like us, pundits and journalists, had said it would be uh, a fairly useless talking shop. It seems to be more than that. There was a commitment to inject over a trillion dollars into the global economy to spend $250 billion to stimulate international trade, um, smiles and handshakes all around, and everybody patting themselves on the back. Uh, are we in danger of going too far the other way in saying that this is a transformative moment and that the global economy is just going to recover from now? What do you think? Before that, Tony, I would say that uh, probably we would go with two uh, very known phrases. Uh, it looks like too good to be true. Let's... Uh be a little bit more professionally skeptical as we should as a journalist although wishing all the best with uh, what has happened but it seems to me that uh, actually it reminded me today like one of those uh, very famous donors conferences uh, you probably recall here at the United Nations or all over the world when we have a sort of firm commitments from the governments and uh, their representatives that they are going to give away this and that in order to stabilize the world as we know, especially I'm talking about the commitment to help the poor. It's certainly encouraging, uh, not to be cynical, uh, it's certainly encouraging uh, what we have had today uh, in the words of the British Prime Minister who uh, said uh, very bravely, or probably he put only a brave face on his, a brave uh, smile on his face, that we are building here the new uh, financial architecture and that we are building the new uh, era that Washington consensus is dead and that we have a new agreement however wait and see because as we all knew bearing in mind was what, what I have just mentioned all about those uh, donors conferences that we have really to see how the commitment will develop how the com commitment will realize I don't know whether the Vladimir goes in that direction or he's more cynical or more optimistic? I am more official, Aero. As a representative of the Russian news official agency, I would have to agree with my, my president, Dmitry Medvedev, who earlier in the day in London said that world leaders are learning fast and they are learning on the job. And it took them only two years to come together and to try to uh, put out something uh, practi in practical terms. Uh, Dmitry Medvedev, uh, speaking to London School of Economics earlier today, he said that it took Western leaders 40 years to devise Bretton Woods system. So in that sense, I think the world is making some progress. Uh, well, you know, on that specific issue that you guys both raise um, in terms of the financial architecture and the regulatory system, uh, it seemed to me that that was one of the fake controversies that, that was promoted by the media in advance when the French President Sarkozy and the German Chancellor Angela Merkel got together and gave their press conference yesterday uh, and prior to that, when Sarkozy said that he would storm out of the meeting if nothing was done on the regulatory front, I thought that was a, a slightly uh, uh, false uh, controversy for the simple reason that there isn't really any argument from Washington. The Obama administration is firmly in the camp of believing that we got into this mess because of under-regulation, because of the cowboy freelancing... Exactly. Uh, exactly. freewheeling policies of the Bush administration, uh, it seems to me Obama is quite happy to get into the business of regulating. In fact, the argument of Republicans against Democrats for decades has been that they are too much in favor of, 
of regulation. Uh, I think that was a free gift Obama had to, to uh, offer to Sarkozy and Angela Merkel and to Dmitry Medvedev as well. You want more, greater regulation of the international financial system? All right, I'll give that to you. He agrees with that. He actually wants it himself. His, his Treasury Secretary, Tim Geithner, has been talking about it prior to this meeting in London. So I, I didn't see how that was actually going to develop into a, into a stand-up fight in, in London um, in the first place. Um, I think what is more interesting is that they have made this commitment to try and pursue uh, uh, the Doha round of uh, free trade talks to try and push that along. The fact that they have put in this facility of $250 billion to stimulate uh, global trade Sitting here, as I do, covering the Pacific Rim these days, uh, people have their eyes focused on what's happening in Asia. They're particularly concerned about Japan, where the economy in Japan has been much more severely hit than the United States. And what's, what's hammered the Japanese has been precisely the loss of exports. So anything that's going to get exports moving again is going to be good for Japan. And then the other issue uh, that, that's of interest here and that I mentioned yesterday is what this means in the, the medium term and the long term about the role that China is going to be playing geopolitically. Uh, again, interesting today, I thought, coming out of London, the fact that the idea of an international currency, which is something the Chinese have said they're very much interested in, was not raised. They said it was put off. It'll be discussed sometime in the near future. It doesn't sound like it's going to be top of the agenda. But the mere fact that people are asking about whether this idea was discussed, about whether it was pursued, about whether it's going to come up in the future, means that China now has the power to put what is a truly revolutionary idea onto the global agenda. And, uh, you know, it seems to me that it is just one more sign of the growing power, the growing strength of China in international affairs. And it's, it, it, you know, not having worked out of the United Nations for the last three years, I haven't really been able to see how the Chinese have been operating there. But I'm wondering if, if you're seeing any uh, evidence of their growing power, uh, growing assertiveness at the Security Council. What we see in the Security Council, uh, as uh, to answer to your question, we see that the Besides uh, losing, uh, in general, the prestige of the United Nations and uh, having, uh, some say, a very weak uh, Secretary General, we also see the blocked Security Council somehow, in which only one ambassador is powerful enough to do what he wants to do indeed, as far as I uh, observed, talk to some people, some journalists, some uh, diplomats, etc. That is uh, Vladimir's ambassador, Churkin. Russian ambassador, of course, Vladimir Churkin of Russia. Not that much uh, China that is going out of the common consensus that we know. In the summit, I saw actually that Obama really uh, did pursue the win-win situation for uh, President Sarkozy and Angela Merkel from the other side because Obama indeed was uh, pursuing the regulatory new regulation and did have somehow the President Medvedev and the Chinese uh, president on, on his side and with the little help, help of new friend Medvedev? I think that for Obama the gains as a result of this G, uh, G20 summit are more on political side and you rightfully pointed to, the, to his talks with the Medvedev and Chinese president it was of course nuclear arms strategic talks exactly and uh, I don't know what uh, political issue was at the top of his agenda with Chinese. Probably but, uh, continuing of buying the bonds again, political and economical yeah, agenda. Please, please. Don't stop don't buying Don't stop buying our, our treasury, bonds. treasury bills. Right. But when, I, when we were mentioning And of course, uh, stimulus, to be fair, uh, some human rights also. <laughs> <laughs> you know, when... I hear all this talk about stimulating the mm -hmm. economy and regulating the economy. <clears throat> I don't think that Russia fits very well in this picture because basically our economy is still based on the export of carbon, uh, 